Hi, this is Howard Reingold, and we're talking about the Learning Games Design Jam, Crafting Learning and Minecraft uh, workshop for DML 2016. And we have three of the conveners here. Uh, Katie is, is uh, missing uh, at the moment, but she will be there at the, at the workshop. So um, why don't you introduce yourselves? Why don't we start with, with Gregory, and then we'll go to Sean and Elizabeth. All right. Hi, I'm Gregory Livingston. Uh, I'm the design and curriculum lead for Connected Camps, and uh, I build uh, virtual classrooms and, and worlds in, inside Minecraft uh, that kids get to explore and, uh, and learn from and collaborate. Uh, and my name is Sean Bouchard. Uh, I am a, uh, a research staff member at the Game Innovation Lab at the University of Southern California. And my name is Elizabeth Swenson, and similarly, I'm part of the research staff and adjunct faculty uh, in the Game Innovation Lab and the Interactive Media and Games Division at the University of Southern California. Sean and I specialize in making educational games, both for in-home and classroom activities on a number of subjects. We're also big Minecraft enthusiasts. Yep. <laughs> so tell us about crafting learning in, in Minecraft. What do you expect and hope for in, in, in your workshop? Sure, absolutely. Well, um, we're really looking forward to this. We're really excited about it. Uh, we're excited about bringing together a group of people, uh, educators and um, uh, people who, who want to use games to uh, teach all sorts of different subjects, math, science, humanities. Uh, Minecraft has proven in the past that it's uh, because it is open world, because it's such a sandbox, it's capable of creating an environment where lots of things can happen. Um, and Elizabeth and I, you know, because of our background in creating educational experiences and um, thinking about how we can use games and leverage the power of games uh, to teach uh, specific things, we're really excited about working together with the participants in the workshop to uh, understand the constraints and the possibilities of Minecraft and how to solve the problems that you have and teach the things that you're interested in uh, within that space. I think we, we have a really exciting platform, and, and uh, Sean mentioned the, the open world nature of it, and I, I think that that's a big key to it. Uh, back way in the past, kids used to get together in the backyard and, and play with sticks and, and make up worlds, uh, and, and today, uh, they get together online to do that, and they can collaborate with other kids uh, across the country and, and imagine new worlds and kind of kind of bring to life uh, whatever it is they want to bring to life within this this virtual world of Minecraft. We're excited to leverage Minecraft as a tool set uh, with practitioners that have some basic literacy in its use, and create a really hands-on experience where we're going to ideate different ideas based on the challenges that the participants bring in, uh, prototype these experiences, and play test them within the three-hour workshop. Fantastic. Um, any examples of the kind of uh, things that you've been doing uh, that uh, have been successful, that, that you've uh, considered to be successful in terms of learning environments in mi Minecraft? Sure. Uh, so um, I, I'll just reference that uh, you know we've played around uh, with lots of uh, different sorts of um, uh, things that happen within the the systems of Minecraft. Um, personally, I'm really interested in the procedural um, game of life sort of nature of it, uh, and how that can be used to, to teach things like systems thinking, uh, procedural thinking, um, a basic understanding of uh, electronics um, uh, and those kinds of systems. Um, but uh, we've also seen Minecraft be used in uh, very creative ways to teach um, sociological topics, uh, to teach uh, more literature-based topics um, and those sorts of things. Uh, the yeah. There's a collaborative social negotiation aspect to these shared worlds that I think is especially powerful when we're interested not just in th system thinking topics, but also topics around uh, historiography, argumentation, and simulation 
uh, in other contexts. Yeah. So uh, we're excited to see who is interested in this particular workshop and cater uh, what we explore to their needs. Hopefully we get a diversity of interests and we have a bunch of different kinds of experiences, uh, but I personally am really excited about uh, leveraging the social aspects of the platform. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more about the, the social aspects and, and the programs that we've been running with um, schools. We've been really emphasizing collaboration and communication. And when you got 20 kids working together to to build a city, and you know they have to figure out how are how are we going to make Central Park? What's going to be in it? And they have to kind of navigate these problems uh, together. Uh, it, it makes it really a, a full social experience uh, that involves iteration and problem solving and communication on, on all these levels. And, and it really does develop uh, 21st century literacy skills uh, for the kids. Mm -hmm. I think there are applications for students studying civics and government around creating rules for themselves on how to negotiate that space as they're building together. Uh, but as Sean mentions, there's a lot of really fun uh, learning applications within the metaphors of Minecraft as being like a natural world and what can we observe and predict uh, based on uh, our experiences here. The emergent efficiencies and economics of that space uh, create some really interesting situations that, uh, that, that players can explore uh, and when they explore those, those situations and problems together there are really, really neat emergent um, effects to that. And tying in with those economies, there's some interesting opportunities to practice uh, simple critical thinking or even the scientific method around, okay, our group's going to focus on an economy like this uh, to thrive in Minecraft. How do we predict that to play out over, you know, so many game days and night cycles compared to another group who might be trying a very different strategy? Right. And, and as they as they build that kind of emerging reality, I think that their imaginations really get to take over too. As kids start to breed horses, eventually they have stables, and they start making a horse racing track. And you've got this whole economy even focused just around trading horses and horse racing and gathering food for them. Or for uh, teachers interested in literature and language or even teaching poetry, there are a lot of opportunities to create emergent narratives in the space through the placement of signposts, through uh, interesting artifacts you leave behind to create an emotional experience for new discoverers who come upon that work. So I think there's opportunity in the arts and through expression as well if we have anyone attending interested in that area. Yep. We've actually been running some uh, book club events, and uh, we had w w one kid uh, wrote part of Goodnight Moon or something in a book, and another kid felt that that was kind of copyright infringement, and instead of, they ended up building a courtroom, and we had a trial about it, um, and, and it was all driven by, by the kids and, and their imagination. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you've, you've successfully conveyed your enthusiasm uh, <laughs> for, for what you're doing, and, and uh, you've also listed such a, a, a broad area of applications that I, I can see a lot of uh, educators uh, being attracted to this. So thank you so much for your time and I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing your workshop in, in Irvine. Thanks Howard. Thank you.